I don't want to see your face any longer. I don't want any trash in my new dream house, so just get out. Ha, huh, what? Yes, I don't want to live with such a trashy woman. My name is Laura, and I'm 34 years old. I was married to Paul, who was four years younger than me, but it was never a matter of concern until lately. I'm that part of my friend's party. My friend Lucy and Paul were gym friends. Paul was a handsome young man with a chiseled jawline and strong physique. He was charming and a jovial man. I was single at that time, and Lucy wanted to desperately set me up with someone. She introduced me to every single man at the party. That's how I was introduced to Paul. Hey Paul, meet my nerdy millionaire friend, Laura. Lucy, stop embarrassing me. Don't be embarrassed, it was a compliment, I blushed and said, thank you, Lucy. You could have included beauty with brains in Laura's introduction. Well, you're right, she is indeed a beauty with brains. Now, you both have a good time, and I'll attend to the other guests. After Lucy went, Paul asked, Hey, why did Lucy call you a nerd? I smiled and said, Well, I am an engineer, and I work for a software company, which keeps me busy most of the time. So, I don't get enough time to socialize and hang out with my friends, so they call me a nerd. Wow, that's awesome. So, you must be having a handsome salary, hence they call you a millionaire nerd. I burst out in laughter, yeah, you could say that. We spent the evening chatting and getting to know each other. I found Paul to be extremely sweet and irresistible. Soon after that, we started meeting outside for coffee and dinner. Paul used to pick me up from work so that we could spend more time together. He worked as an assistant in a small company. After dating for a few months, Paul proposed to me. I loved Paul, but I felt it was too early to decide. Besides, Paul was four years younger than me, so I was concerned if he was serious about it. Paul, are you serious about this? Of course, we've been going out for a while now. It is only a couple of months since we met. Besides, you're four years younger than me. Paul chuckled, oh come on, Laura. You're still stuck with all these age-old beliefs that the husband should be older than the wife. No, it doesn't matter to me, but I was wondering if you had a problem with this. Chill, Laura. You're a modern woman who shouldn't be thinking about these ridiculous things. How he convinced me that we would live happily as a married couple, I finally agreed. We met each other's parents and informed them about our decisions. Although my father didn't say anything, he was happy about my wedding. My mother asked me privately, Laura, honey, I hope you've discussed your finances with Paul. Yes, mom, don't worry. I'm just concerned with the fact that you are doing way better than Paul in your career, so that should not come as a problem between you both. Men are egotistic about these things. No, mom, Paul is a sweet man. He does not have any such ego. In fact, he agreed to do the household chores as I have a busy working schedule. I'm glad to know this. Take care, honey. This conversation made me think that I have never discussed my finance with Paul, neither did I ask him about his salary. I was never interested in his money as I earned well enough for both of us. Paul had inquired about my salary, in fact, he asked me about my salary even before he proposed to me. I was worried about this for a while, but then decided to ignore it. I was super excited to start my married life with Paul. After the wedding, we went on our honeymoon trip to Florida. The trip was sponsored by my company as a wedding gift. We lived our life to the fullest during this time. After a month, Paul sat me down after dinner and asked me for a favor. Honey, I'm so sorry to ask you this, but I need your help. What's up, Paul? Is everything all right? 
Well, no. My parents are in trouble. The apartment in which they are living is on the second floor without any elevator. As they are aging, it's becoming difficult for them to climb the stairs. Yeah, I understand. Why don't you shift them to another house on the ground floor or to an apartment with an elevator? He ignored my suggestion and said, Actually, Laura, I wanted to build a house for them. I was surprised to hear this. Okay, I hope you know how expensive it is to build a house, right? Yeah, I know that. Do you have enough savings, or are you planning to take a loan? Paul looked down for a few moments and then said, Laura, I was wondering if you could lend me the money to build the house. I was shocked, this was unexpected. Ha, huh, what? Since you earn so well, which should not be a problem for you. But Paul, I'm not sure if I can lend that huge amount of money. Why not? Paul became aggressive with his ask. I honestly didn't know how to deny his request, so I just said, okay, let me think about it. Sure, I'll wait for your help. I spent the night wondering if it would be wise to lend all my savings to Paul and that too to construct the house for his parents. I'd be working so hard to earn this money and have saved it to buy my own house and retire peacefully. The next morning, while I was leaving for the office, Paul hugged me and said, Laura, I'll be waiting for your decision. Let's discuss this on the weekend. I'm running late. I wasn't feeling too good about this. I didn't know what to do, so I spoke to my colleague regarding this. She suggested I should make an official contract and get it signed by Paul so that he returns the money. That seemed to be a good idea, to have everything official, so that Paul does not back out later. I returned home and informed Paul, I can lend them the money, but you would need to repay me in three years. To my surprise, Paul agreed to this. I made it clear to him that he would have to sign the official papers, and if he defaulted, I could take action against him. Hearing this, Paul burst out in laughter. You got to be kidding me. Well, no, I'm serious. I have the papers too. What? I gave him a serious look, to which he said, fine, I'll sign. He smoked me in the papers. I transferred the money to him, although I still did not feel good about lending the money because Paul's salary was not sufficient to pay me back. Paul started behaving weirdly after this. He came home late and did not help with the household chores. Whenever I complained about this, he dismissed me, saying that he was busy at work. I gradually lost my affection for Paul. During the weekend, he was mostly away, overseeing the construction of his new house. At times, he didn't come home, saying that he would stay at his parents' place to care for them. I was getting suspicious of his activity. I could no longer take this frustration and decided to confront Paul. Paul, I've realized that you have been acting weird all this while and living like a parasite in this house. What do you mean? How dare you use such words against me? First of all, you have been living on my expenses since we married. You have not contributed anything financially to this house. On top of that, now you don't even help me with the household chores. He looked into my eyes and responded casually, you knew that I was earning low, then why did you marry me? I was shocked at his response. Excuse me. I'm not in the mood to fight with you now. I'm excited about the housewarming party that mom's organizing in my new dream house tomorrow. He said this as if he tried to mock me. I couldn't believe my ears. Paul did not even inform me that the house is already complete and they are throwing a housewarming party. I yelled at him, you built the house with my money and you didn't even inform me that the house is complete and your mother is organizing a housewarming party without even inviting me. What the hell? He casually responded, oh, my bad. I must have forgotten.
please be our guest. He went out of the house, humming at the top of his voice, as if nothing happened. I was so angry at him that I wanted to break everything that was there in front of me, but I somehow calmed myself. After an hour or so, I got a call from my mother-in-law. Hello. Hi, I called you to inform you that we are organizing a housewarming party at our new house tomorrow. Okay. I didn't say anything else. My hung up the phone. I was pretty sure that Paul would have asked her to call and invite me. If she genuinely wanted to invite me, she would have done so earlier. Besides, she does not like me, she never talked to me properly, even when she met me for the first time, or even after the wedding. Initially, I didn't want to go to that party because of what had happened, but later I thought that if I don't go, Paul and his mother would badmouth me, saying that I'm jealous of their new house. So, I decided to put up a fake smile and show up for a while. I reached the location to see that the entrance of the house was decorated with flowers, and Paul was standing at the entrance with his mom, greeting the guests. As I entered the house, my mother-in-law said, Oh, you came. I thought you wouldn't come. What made you think that? Fall into vain. Now that you have come, get inside. I went inside the house and met my father-in-law, who was sitting alone on a chair. He greeted me with a genuine smile. He held my hand and thanked me for the money. That was the only time I felt happy about lending the money, because neither Paul nor his mother had ever shown any gratitude for my help. Paul and his mother gave a cold shoulder to me throughout the event. I was just killing time, talking half-heartedly to Paul's relatives. I was eagerly waiting for the event to be over, so that I could leave that toxic place. As soon as all the guests left, I went to my father-in-law to say goodbye before leaving. Goodbye, you take care of your health. Just then, my mother-in-law intervened. You don't need to be bothered about my husband when you can't take care of yours. Ha, what are you saying? You have been a lousy wife who doesn't do any household chores and gets them done by my son. What kind of wife are you? I didn't force your son to do the household chores. He volunteered to do so. Besides, I work too, so I need his help with the household chores. You should be grateful to him for tolerating a woman like you. But instead, you abuse and torture my son. What are you talking about? I have never tortured or abused Paul. Don't pretend to be innocent. Paul has told me how you have mentally tortured him for the money and got an agreement signed as well. What kind of wife would do such mean things? My father-in-law tried to intervene. Megan, stop. Why are you unnecessarily torturing the girl? Instead of being grateful for what she has done for us, you sit there quietly or else get inside your room. I could not believe that Megan would misbehave with Thomas in this way. She then turned to me and said, you should be grateful to my son for marrying you. Else, who marries an old and ugly woman like you? I was so frustrated with her words, I lost my cool and shouted back at her. How can you talk to me like this? Paul intervened, Laura, mind your language. How dare you raise your voice in front of my mother? Didn't you hear when she abused me? Paul rolled his eyes and said, I can't take your tantrums anymore. Ha, my tantrums? Do you realize how badly you and your mother are behaving with me? I don't want to see your face any longer. I don't want any trash in my new dream house, so just get out. Ha, what? Yes, I don't want to live with such a trashy woman. You've been living on my income all this time, and now you're calling me trash. You're pathetic, Laura. Let us get this straight. You knew you could have never found a handsome man like me, seeing your age and below average looks, hence you married me, although I didn't earn well. So now, 
You should not be complaining about the money. My face turned red in anger. I felt tricked into this marriage. I yelled at him, I can't stay with such a shallow person. I want a divorce and my money back. Paul started laughing in an evil tone. Sure, you want a divorce? Go ahead. You have to pay me the money if you want a divorce. What the hell? Since you want the divorce, you have to bear it. Paul reveals the evil side of himself, which he was masking all this while. I was furious to see his evil smile. You have to pay my money back, which I lent you, or sue. You go and find your stupid papers first. I felt numb. I left the place, as I could not take any longer. They insulted and despised me. I went straight to my bank, where I had kept the papers in the bank locker. I was shocked to see that the paper was missing from the locker. When I checked the bank log, I found that Paul has accessed the locker a month ago. It was a joint account, hence Paul too had the access to the locker. We opened this joint account after the wedding to save money from our earnings, but sadly, it was just me who was depositing the money. I kept the copy of the document in my wardrobe as well, which was missing too. After all this, I realized how badly Paul has tricked me into this marriage. He showed interest in me at Lucy's party only because of my high salary. He was living comfortably with my earnings and my house, then he emotionally blackmailed me to lend the money for his house, and later threw me out of that house. It was not all, he stole the agreement papers too. I could not do anything to get the money back. I was tricked into all of these things, but not with the papers. I still managed to keep the original papers with me. I gradually sensed Paul would be treacherous, hence, I kept the original document safe at my parents' house, kept a copy in the bank, and the wardrobe. Despite all the pain and insults which I went through, I was glad that I followed my instinct and got the paper signed by Paul and kept it safe away from his reach. I called up my mom and narrated the entire incident. My mom was so angry to know this, that she wanted to sue Paul and his mother for torturing me. My mother also told me that she was not shocked to know this. I questioned her, did you know about Paul's intention? No, I didn't know exactly, but I somehow sensed that he was just acting like he was in love with you. How did you sense that? He was in so in a hurry for the wedding, you barely knew each other when he proposed and insisted to marry. Well, yeah, you're right. I should have been careful when you came home. I asked you if you've discussed the finances with him, to which you said yes. Actually, mom, I lied to you. I never discussed my finances with him, neither did I ask about his salary ever because I was never bothered about his money. Well, take this as a lesson and don't trust anyone so soon. I hired a lawyer and sent the divorce papers along with the official notice, asking him to repay the amount in three years, or else the court would sell off his property to give me back the money. Paul and his mother had no idea what was coming to them when the divorce papers and the notice for money reached them. They desperately tried to call me, I ignored all their calls and blocked their numbers. Paul tried to call my parents as well, but they ignored him too. Paul sent a voicemail to my office number, saying, I'm sorry for all I did. Please forgive me. You know I love you so passionately. I got carried away by my mom. I'm hopeful that you would take me back. Paul has always used my emotions to trick me into his evil plan, but not this time. I deleted and blocked his contact. He also sent a message through his lawyer, requesting me to waive the money, at least by 50%, as his salary was not enough to pay the hefty amount in three years. I ignored the request. I wonder how did he even think that I would waive off my money after all the insults and personal attacks. I can never forgive them. I patiently waited for three years to pass. 
Paul was barely able to manage 50% of the amount, and that too through loans. The bank offers a loan based on the salary, as his salary was low, he could not get enough money from the bank, hence, he had to sell the house he insulted and threw me out of. The dream house, and now, three years later, he has to sell his house to pay my money back. Lucy told me that Paul would move back in with his parents into their old apartment. Everyone in the neighborhood gave them the cold shoulder after the truth came out. Megan constantly tortured Paul and Thomas for their poverty and insulted them for their low income. Paul was even criticized at his workplace after they got to know about the incident. He left his job and moved to a different city, and Thomas too abandoned Megan and went to live with his brother in the countryside. Megan has been working as a nanny for a living. I don't feel sorry for Paul or Megan because they both deserve that. I'm glad to know that Thomas would be living peacefully during his last retirement years. I, on the other hand, have been dating Charles for a year now. He is my colleague and 35 years old. I've known him for many years, but we had no romantic feelings earlier. He was from a different team at the office. A year after my divorce, Charles and I interacted at the office party and we started liking each other's company. I'm cautious this time and taking my own sweet time to analyze things before making any decisions. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.